Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. Welcome, everybody. Um, I appreciate you coming out first thing in the morning here on a Thursday uh, after, er, morning. And today we are pleased to have members of the Cherokee Nation tribe um, from Oklahoma here visiting us. Um, and they're going to give a talk about um, their experiences with their language and revitalization in that area and using technology. So it's my pleasure to have, from o all the way from Oklahoma, Roy <laughs> and Joseph. Thanks. All right. Can you hear me good? Can you hear me? Does that work? Well, no. um, I'm Joseph Herb, and Kanati uh, Dagwadoan. Uh, Joseph Herb is my name. Um, Kanati is my Cherokee name. Um, we appreciate you guys inviting us up. We're going to give you a quick presentation of uh, some of our technologies. But we also want to um, kind of change your perceptives of, of what you might have thought Cherokees were like with technologies, because uh, many think um, um, of technologies as a certain thing. We're going to hope to allude to all the different uh, ways that Cherokees have adapted over the um, uh, years. And so um, we're going to start with our presentation, and uh, I'll turn it over to Roy, and we'll just kind of switch back and forth. Yeah, we're going to do some tag teaming here. Uh, Sio Nagata, Kani Golaha, Dagodoa. My name is Roy Boney Jr. Uh, I work with Joseph at the Cherokee Nation. Uh, our department at the tribe is called uh, Language Technology. We work in the education department for our tribe, and what we do is uh, we come up with solutions for uh, our language and technology. I guess we're going to kind of explain the history of our language and kind of show where we went from then till now. So let's go ahead and get started here. Uh, we have a uh, written language, and it's a syllabary. It's a, you, you can kind of see some of the examples of what it looks like here. And, uh, and this is Sequoia. Uh, he's the uh, man that created our written language in the 1800s. Uh, Cherokee is a very old culture and language. It's been around for thousands of years, but it wasn't until the 1800s that uh, it was kind of codified into a written form. Uh, this is, uh, if you might have noticed at the beginning, some of the, on the first slide, some of the characters look like English uh, characters. They didn't start off that way. This is the original handwritten syllabary by Sequoia. This is like around 1812, I guess 1816. Uh, you can see it was written very like cursive. Uh, it was written with a quill pen, obviously, in that time. But what happened is, you know, we have this original version, but we had to come up with the like uh, most cultures, we adopted the printing press. And so what happened, we had to modify our language to, from this very curvilinear form to a simplified form to the metal typeface. So what, at this point, a lot of uh, uh, Christian missionaries were in the Cherokee Nation. And so when they, we had the, the printing press, we adopted our we modified our language from this, and some of it kind of just turned into the uh, English character set because of what they had available. Because carving the uh, very curvilinear forms into the metal typeface is really difficult. So that's why we kind of, it, we wound up with this. So like again, you see some of the characters look like English, but they do not have the English sound. So the syllabary, the top row are the uh, vowels of our uh, language. We have a, a, e, o, u, and a. Uh. And if you go down the rows here, you, the next row is the Ga, ka, ge, gi, go, gu, ga. It follows that pattern. So we have like a consonant. So there's a few, uh, a, a rare exception here. We have the s character. That's the one that's not an actual syllable. syllable. Uh, but we do have uh, the syllabary style of language here. Uh, here's some images. It's kind of dark up here, but it's the images of a printing press, uh, an image of the newspaper. Again, there's some more of the, the metal type face there was carved. And this is a, an actual image of the, uh, the original of, of our language from the old printing press as it's printed on the paper from the 1800s. Uh, this is the Cherokee Phoenix. The Cherokee Nation is the, we started the very first uh, Native American newspaper in the United States. This is the first issue in 1828. 
it was printed in English and then in Cherokee. And it might be hard to see from where you're at, but you can see the columns. Some have the Cherokee letters in English, Cherokee in English. And uh, during this time in American history in the late 1820s, there was a movement by the federal government to displace the eastern tribes, the southeastern tribes, from uh, there to Oklahoma. So the Cherokee Nation began to print this paper as part of a, like a PR campaign. Uh, the original uh, Cherokee territory was in the east, so like in the North Carolina, South Carolina, Tennessee, uh, Georgia area, that's where the Cherokee Nation was originally based. <coughs> and so this uh, removal era time, they call it the Trail of Tears. I don't know if you've all heard this, this term before, but what happened essentially was that uh, the federal government uh, had this uh, bill called the Indian Removal Act, which uh, Congress passed, but the Cherokee Nation fought it in court. And so the Cherokee Nation actually won the Supreme Court case in this, where they said, we're not going to move, but President Jackson, Andrew Jackson, said, you know, basically, you know, can you enforce that? And they just kind of made the removal happen against the will of the court. Uh, this map here just shows an example of the different uh, paths we took from the east to the west. You can go to the next one here. Uh, yeah. And when we arrived in Oklahoma, we kind of re rebuild it, or started to rebuild, and this is, I'll let you take over for a bit here if you want. So one thing that people don't realize is that when we were removed, we had about 80 to 90% literacy rate and most of it in two languages. We were removed by people with a 13% literacy rate. We knew about the, um, uh, the rubber plants being mined by the British. We knew about the Turkish military cannons in the 1800s. And we were being removed by a very uneducated group of people. And we did it because they had our, we were outnumbered. And we went to their courts, we won. We got pushed out into this Indian territory area and we rebuilt. And we rebuilt with one of the biggest systems of school systems in the world because um, we believed in the idea of democracy. We believed that we wanted this. So we built these giant uh, schools. We had um, universities. We had school systems for everybody from 6 to 21 for free in the entire Cherokee Nation. Yes? What was the population at the time? We were removed, and there was about 20,000 at the time. And then we had a pretty big drop. We lost quite a number. There's anywhere estimates from 2,000, but when people got there, we lost a lot more because of the disease and um, because of, uh, you know, when you come into a territory and you have nothing. Um, but quickly, we rebuilt. We rebuilt all of this stuff and um, um, had schools. We had a female schools. We educated our women. We paid women equal to men. 1800s. If you remember, this is a very strange idea for the time. But our population, we were matrilineal. We get our clans. I announced my clan. It was earlier that I'm a long hair clan. We get it because of my mom, you know, because our, our women in our societies are important for that. Go ahead. And we had books. We like to read. Heaven forbid, an Indian with a book. Very dangerous. <laughs> this is our writing system. Um, go ahead. We had many things. This is our people. We were still very traditional. Today we still are. Um, this is Swimmer. He's a storyteller. It's a very famous image. Um, these are some of our people from, and we also, some of the people that weren't removed during this time that um, ran away or were able to hide out were the Eastern Band, and they're in that area. Why our, our group is in this area trying to struggle and remain. We have whites coming in at the time immigrants coming in and um, staying in Cherokee Nation illegally and starting to outnumber us. Uh, the Civil War happened, um, very ugly situation for every group. We lost more people in the Civil War than we even lost during the trail, which was a, a very devastating time. Um, but we rebuilt again. It's a football team. You don't always think about Cherokees and football, but if you know anything about Cherokees in modern time, we're big football fans. Except for Roy and I, we play on computers too much. <laughs> so technology keeps advancing and we're adapting to everything from printing presses to newspapers to communications. And one of the most advanced ideas is that this, we hear about this phone thing. And Cherokees have no poverty in Cherokee Nation, no homeless. Um, our system is set up where we have things that are taken, our culture is built like this. 
We were even studied for everything. Pe whites would come into every home and document everything we owned. We had wealth that um, we weren't super rich, but we had no poverty, and um, they didn't think we were aggressive enough. So one of the things that um, we thought as a group, we found this idea of this phone, brand new idea. And um, they ran this, this cable, and um, they came in, the salesmen come in from west of the Mississippi, no one's had this yet, and um, these people get on one end to another. And they talk, and they use it for a while, and the council is um, trying to decide if they want to use this or not. And they come back, they come over, and, well, what do you think? Should we get this technology? And they say, talks Cherokee. Because they just communicated in Cherokee, and since it was in our language, it was our technology now. So we bought it, and we had the first phone. And it went from Tahlequah. Now, once again, we knew that because of the influx of whites into our territory, that we had to do something about making our area official. So the five, they call it civilized, but well, we don't like that term, because what it was is the five tribes that read. Um, in the area that were really big, Choctaws, Creeks, Seminoles, Chickasaws, and all this stuff, um, and Cherokees, got together as a group with different co languages and came up and wrote this constitution of a state to the United States government that we will be a state of the United States government as an Indian state, not a territory, an Indian state. So we sent our official documents for statehood to the United States government with our commission that basically wrote this and um, they didn't like it so they gave it to the whites in Oklahoma City <laughs> and uh, they founded the state of Oklahoma with our document <laughs> and they changed just a few things 90 percent of it was still written by Indians us backward people but they took out some things to improve it banking system land ownership and education our education idea was that we wanted everybody in the entire communities educated. For a strong democracy, everybody needs to be educated. So it was free in our constitution from 6 to 21, males and females, poor and rich, to get educated. And this was a mandatory thing. They changed that. So if you know anything about Oklahoma, poverty rates and education skyrocketed. Homeless, you know, skyrocketed if the foundation of 1907. So. But we continue. <laughs> uh, well, as this is going on, you know, throughout history, the Cherokees have always adapted the best as we could to everything. And this is just an example of this. This is uh, from the printing press on. We had every form of uh, written digital, or not digital, but uh, technology that there was. We had typewriters. We did the, like, the printing press. There's various forms of communication. We adopted and used it. This is just an image of uh, an old Cherokee typewriter. You can see we have uh, 85 characters in our language. That so was kind of a trick to get them all on there. But yeah, this is a really old typewriter here. We we'll skip over to the next one. Uh, what happened is, like Joseph said, Oklahoma became a state, and from for a lot of part of the 19th or the 1900s. Uh, we were suffering in poverty and various things were happening and the, the tribe itself as a government just kind of fell apart and uh, what happens we had very little way in the way of actual uh, organization so for the longest time uh, they called it a chief for a day for decades the president of the United States would appoint a chief of the Cherokee Nation and other tribes too just to do business so I say this guy is a chief for a day so he can sign this document and we'll, we'll move on to do this and as part of this, uh, like I said, our tribal organization kind of fell apart. And uh, in the middle of the century, there is this uh, movement by the federal government called the termination of Indians. That doesn't mean like extermination. It just means that the idea of uh, tribes being sovereign entities on their own and within the United States, they wanted to do away with this idea. So they got this idea. They said, we're going to try to terminate the tribal governments. And as part of this, they instituted this idea of kind of like a worker relocation thing. They would come to Oklahoma and uh, get people, like of, of tribal peoples, and say, hey, we can move you to Los Angeles, or we can move you to Chicago or something. So a lot of, during this time, a lot of our people left 
the area and moved out. So that kind of explains why today there's a large population of Cherokees in that, like Texas and in California and various other urban centers. Uh, then, so this went on until the 70s. And this is uh, an image of Chief Keeler. Uh, he's the one that kind of brought the modern Cherokee Nation into existence as it is now. You can skip ahead. And he kind of reorganized everything together. We got our, our tribal a government running again and kind of just on track like we used to be. Uh, this is an image of uh, the Cherokee Nation tribal complex. This is centered in Tahlequah, Oklahoma, which is where we work. Uh, this is the uh, image of it today. Uh, you may know this person, if not. This is uh, Chief Wilma Mankiller. She was the first uh, female chief of our tribe, and she made a lot of headway for us. She became a symbol, an international symbol of, you know, how, like uh, female power and minority rights and all this, and she was very influential. And she unfortunately passed away just a few months ago. Uh, so we're going to move into this idea here. We mentioned earlier about the uh, newspaper. You know, so we use it as a PR piece about the removal idea. Like we were against it. So we, there was time we actually sent it to uh, Europe and other countries. So during this during the 1800s, during the removal time. Uh, the whole world, at least like in Europe essentially, like, was aware of what was happening to us as a people. Uh, and because of this, as when the newspaper was actually sent over there, there was an awareness of our language uh, amongst people for the longest time. And going to this Unicode consortium, they were aware like this idea of our language being in Europe and other nations knowing of who we are in our language, our unique uh, written language, it was adopted into the Unicode uh, code set. So there's a code page for Cherokee in Unicode, which is really great for us. We kind of can skip ahead to the... Matt. Yeah. So in the... Go back one. Okay. Well, there's our little fun animation <laughs> at the point for going over uh, to Europe. But in March uh, last year, we were really excited because uh, it may seem like a small thing to some people that understand really you know what the, this body does. In March, the Unicode Consortium concluded our language, which is a Chalagi, as part of the CLDR repository, at CLDR, a Common Locale Data Repository. And in a sense, that made our language really, like not official, but it was recognized our language on an international level with everybody else, especially in the technology world. That like put us on the map. We're like, we're here, we're, we're totally recognized. We're like really happy about this development. <laughs> you can skip over there unless you want to see our fun animation again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and because of the awareness, like I said, people have always been interested in our language. And this is an image from uh, Herman Zapp, the really famous uh, typographer. And he was working on a Cherokee font in the 1970s. This is from his book. And so, like I said, people have always been interested in our language, and that explains why we have the uh, connection to technology today. Go ahead and skip. Uh, but what's happened is uh, around the year 2000, uh, the Cherokee Nation developed its own font. And at this time, you know, Unicode, no one really quite understood it, where we were in the Cherokee Nation and all this. So we were unaware of this idea of what that was and what it meant. And it was, it was all just kind of jumbled at this time. Uh, so we created a font, and this is our, the very first Cherokee Nation font, but it wasn't Unicode you know, compliant. So skip to the next one. Uh, but what happened is when they designed this font, we had came up with this uh, keyboard layout system here. So you have uppercase and lowercase, and you get your various characters. But what's going on is essentially our original font was based on, it was basically English with the glyphs switched out with Cherokee onto it. So it followed the uh, English Unicode point system. So this is, the previous slide was showing the English, you know, if you know the Unicode points, you know like this is the small a, large a. If you go to the Cherokee side, you'll see the same numbers kind of represent the different characters. So what would, was happening for years was that we would, if you didn't have that particular font, you know, we'd send it off, people would get a document, it'd be all like jumbled, and we couldn't use it on emails, and <laughs> we couldn't create websites in Cherokee without this font. And it was a really difficult, complex process, so we were basically regulated to typing a document and printing it out. 
you know, that just with this font. That's all we could do. Really. We have a lot of documents in this old font, and we're grateful for the development of it. And if, without it, we would still be kind of languishing with, in digital technology. But when we kind of started getting into the idea of Unicode and really understanding what it means, uh, we were surprised to find out Cherokee's already was in it. With, you know, we just didn't know this. I was like, hey, look at that. Cherokee's in the Unicode. It's got this code, uh, code range and a code page and all this. So this image is our language showing the Unicode points that are actually designated as Cherokee Unicode points here. You can skip to the next one. All right. And this is, yeah, let him so, take over for a bit. Yeah, this is one of the things that really starts to get exciting. Because one technology builds another, as you guys know. You make one advancement, another advancement happens because of it. So there's a constant improvement. So we got Unicode. Holy cow. What are we going to do with it? But we're not just about this because it's not about technology, as you know. It's about life. It's about use. It's about communication. Our language, we have a school, Chalagi Juna de la Quasti. It's... Um, it's our, our immersion school where we teach kids math, sciences, everything in the Cherokee language, geography. So we're teaching our children and grazing them to be fluent speakers now because we've had a, TVs and all this stuff has really hurt us. That technology destroyed my chances and like when we grew up it was considered backward to speak the language. So we've had to do a lot of work to get our language skills up and when we started doing this stuff years ago we started with technology. And we built these schools to teach this stuff, sciences and math. So we teach these little kids all this stuff. And we've been working them with them for years so that we have schools. And we're to sixth grade. Go ahead. We learn about you know, everything that you would learn about it in school. But we do it in our language because our language is as good as Chinese or Japanese or anything for us. We can still learn these basic concepts in our own thing. But for the longest time, we were convinced by the white government that it's not a good educational language because we wouldn't be as smart. And we've been fighting this idea that not only can you be as smart, we have thousands of years of knowledge and stories in our communities. And we're bringing this kind of stuff into the knowledge of our children now. This is, you know, obviously our science stuff, which we have stories about all the stars and things that old cultures do. Continue. There's the United States. It's all in Cherokee. And it's an important idea that you don't forget this is an historically native country. And when you guys localize, don't forget, you know, there's all these tech companies and we work in, um, all through Silicon Valley, we worked with some companies, and um, most of the time when you're doing these um, localization things, um, it's not here, because <laughs> you got English, right? Maybe you can argue that you have Spanish, that people use some too. But Europe's full of things. you got all this stuff going on. But we don't have any other place to go. <laughs> this is our home, and this is our home where Tracy Monteith, a fellow in the Cherokee and Apple employee. That's that's where the Cherokee. Microsoft. Are. Yeah, Microsoft employee. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You're going fast. So this is our handwriting. In the beginning, our school had no computers. Can you imagine? It was fine at first. You're teaching kids how to read and write and do shapes and learn basic stories and learn how to write. But they got older. Go ahead. And um, one of the things how I got into it. Oops. Oh, go back one. This is how I got into this. I did computer animations about traditional stories. This is a little clip. This was made in 2000. On a PC, 30 PCs. <laughs> I want to see the world that tonight. I win it with a dollar. You got stunty. You got to get saying. Santa, do you think I win it with a dollar? I get listening here. I live with a dollar. We just want to see. This is a kid show Roy and I made. Yeah. 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 The bus they have riding on it. That's Achuja. That's the boy. Good done. 
I won't make you watch all. We do it at all for these children, and that way we have TV shows, we have animations, we make little video games, and um, we have computers now. Now, I know they're not quite the kind of computers you probably would like us to have, and, um, but they work in our language. Um, the other company has supported our language um, since 2003. We have a keyboard, we have fonts, and... Um, so we started with that because they put some of similar products that you'd be familiar with in our school and they had no Cherokee on them. And we're an all Cherokee school. So we had no ability to see or type in our language. You can do some third party stuff, but it's really tricky. And there was no um, sorting. So like it had no idea if you do files or all that stuff. You know, it, it was very difficult. So we uh, started with these guys. They're like any kids. They just want it to work in their language. They want to have the same cool stuff you do. They want to do emails. They want to do blogs, and they do it all. So they were doing this stuff using computers. We started doing also, well, we did all this stuff, and we've had these kids since they were little, you know, and they grew up. They're watching crazy shows. <laughs> and go ahead and hit. We designed a keyboard to fit over that. We started doing iChat, video chatting so that they could be constantly con next to each other, even though they don't live next door anymore. Because what we found is that they would speak Cherokee all day and go home to their families and speak English, because their home still to them felt English. We introduced iChat, and their parents would go, they speak Cherokee at home now. Because they thought their house is now Cherokee because they had a computer in it that these elders kept calling them on and their friends kept calling them on, and those are the ones they speak Cherokee to. And so their parents were introduced to this idea. We would record elders talking, it's a little dark here, uh, and having conversations, and have them discuss the ideas of, of these old stories that they would tell to each other. We'd, we'd quiz them on their auditory skills, and if they're understanding everything, their verb conjugations, um, which you have to do if, you know, when they're young, trying to make sure they're good speakers, that they know the, the culture and some of the traditional stuff that we're teaching. And this is um, one of the exciting things is that Tracy's group of Cherokees also have a, a school. And they're, we're all one people with, two, with different governments, but um, you want to talk about this one? This yes. is... Well, what, what's, what you're seeing here is uh, in the upper left corner is our kids talking to the kids in Cherokee, North Carolina, from Oklahoma, North Carolina. So. These are two different immersion schools, but they see each other, and they talk to each other, they play games, they teach each other dances and songs and various things. So we're keeping the culture alive by connecting to our old brothers and sisters back east. And so this, we're just using technology to do this, and we're, the kids love it. I mean, the kids live in this world, so if we don't have it for them, you know, what are they going to do? So we had to make it for them. It's a happy kid. <laughs> now, most people don't have the idea or the um, situation, if they've never dealt with it, to not have your language on a computer. And to learn how to read and write in that, and then you go here, and we don't teach them to read or write in the beginning. They can't do that. And all their friends and cousins can do this stuff, but it's a disadvantage now. But if you know our history, we've never, never accepted disadvantage. We have it happen to us, and we achieve. And there's our achievement. But there is still one issue. They got old enough for phones and stuff. And everything went mobile. Ugh. So this is the first day this thing came out. Yeah, we were fortunate in the sense that, like Joseph said, that in 2003, uh, Apple uh, OS X started supporting the Cherokee language. It has a Unicode font and uh, two keyboards installed on it, out of the box. There's no installation required by anyone that gets one of these. So this is like anywhere in the world, if there's a Cherokee person, they can get a Mac and run with it. Uh, and because of this idea, we kind of started talking to them about, hey, you know, how about your other devices, your mobile devices? Uh, so what this screen here is actually on the day that this particular device came out. <laughs> uh, 
we went to go check on it, and this is from the, uh, one of the Apple stores, and we went to our school's website. And um, again, out of the box, there was no need to install anything on this. Our language is supported on this right out of the box, and because it's all because of the Unicode ID. You know, without Unicode, this isn't going to happen. And so this, this kind of ties our history back to the removal error of when we were using the newspaper to send it out to everybody to know what we're doing. Like, hey, what's going on? And so because out of the awareness, we have this today. Uh, these are some images of some e-books we're making. We're getting the uh, e-publishing now with this. Uh, these, this is about Andy Payne. He's a uh, Cherokee that ran across the United States in a race, and he won. Uh, when was that? 19... 1943 or something. He actually yeah. ran, and there was a big, giant race, and people from all over the world came. And it was $25. <laughs> it's a lot of money. <laughs> so he went out to, he was looking for a job, because in Oklahoma we had a dust bowl and all this stuff, grapes of wrath kind of thing, and Cherokees were involved in just, hey, we're going to starve to death. So he went out there to look for some work, found this race. Well, he's a pretty good runner. It's $25. So he went back to Oklahoma, borrowed a bunch of money from a lot of people to get $25, and then ran back to California for the race. Then he ran from LA, and they were racing with all these people, Africans, Europeans, a British guy who did really well, and went through Chicago, and then right into New York City, and he won $2,500. And he did, that was one of the best achievements, Cherokees think. Well, later he became a lawyer and stuff, but, <laughs> you know, but he did something really great. And so we, uh, you know, he did a lot after that, and, you know, he got very educated, and, but his younger years, he was a runner, and we teach our kids about him. We have traditional stories, you know, without this kind of technologies, we could lose all of thousands of years of knowledge because we're not on a fancy device. So we started making these, and this is what was really exciting is um, they had computers, but then they started getting phones, and they don't work in the language. So you give up your language because you got to text to your best friend, like, oh my God, did you hear what he said about this? Oh, you want to know? You know, they're going to give it up in Civic English because they can't do it. So we worked with them, and we're able to get this going. And we hear that you have a lovely new product out. <laughs> hint, hint, and nudge. Because not everybody uses the same product, but we're very excited that we actually have the chance for our people to text. Now you think, well, and so did we. Well, that's great for the kids, you know, because kids love texting. The weirdest thing that's happened is that our elders have loved texting now. I get text all day in Cherokee by a bunch of people in their late 60s to early 70s every day because of this. We love our language so much and our history. This is what we do with it. We will adopt technologies if they're in our language. And our children, if you notice, her feet aren't touching the ground. <laughs> This is how exciting it is for us because if you've never been in a situation that we have where you don't get it, you don't, you're not included, and then you are, you will use it, and you'll use it every day. There he is, Ed Jumper. I just talked to him on the phone a while ago. He yeah, texts he's... me all the time. We're localizing <laughs> in this picture. It's actually too dark to see the people that are sitting around this giant screen. We're localizing a uh, product somewhere else. So we're coming up with these tech terms that we're using. Very happy children. And, you know, once again, we're not product biased. If you go around Cherokee Nation, the most, the sad thing is everybody still has PCs. It's the number one product in all of Cherokee Nation still. And it doesn't really work very well in our language. But the ones that do have the opportunity take every advantage. And this is one thing that we love telling, and in our communities, no one gets. So, yeah, on the these are you know screenshots from the iPad, but on the, the right, that where you can see our language, it says "find," and it says "Ocio Elohi." In Cherokee, that means "Hello World." So, <laughs> it was the first thing we typed on it, <laughs> and like we told people there, and they never got the joke. We we're like, yeah, they're like, what? <laughs> what do you mean? Well, that's nice. Search engines. Yeah, we, what's happening now is because of the, uh, like I said, the Unicode thing is so important to us. You know, 
we have Cherokee websites. There's Cherokee Wikipedia now. Uh, and if you do a search for like anything in our language, we just use the search for Chalagi, and this is what came up. There's lots of websites, various things happening. And people are uh, making websites and blogs and wikis and all kinds of stuff now in our language. And it's continuing to grow really fast. And uh, I said, we're really excited about this idea. And we just, we've, our, our goal, like I said, we're not part of specific, but if, if it works in our language, we'll use it. We'll use it no matter what it is. We want choices. So we're trying to get on everything that we can. Uh, we talk about that These one? are the kids write wikis and blogs, and so they're writing all the day. They're they're putting stuff up. Um, this is a little girl who wrote this. I think she was uh, she's nine now. Yeah. Right? Like this is this is exciting for us. People are using the language. They're using technology, and they're using it in a way that people don't think of Indian people doing. Well, not that type of Indian people. <laughs> Your other Indian people, I mean, come on, you guys got good creds. I mean, we're trying to build up to that. So if there's anyone here, like, um, this is some exciting stuff. Now, here's another thing that we started localizing. Facebook, you might have heard of it, might have even used it before. And we do too, in our language. Unfortunately, it's used a lot. So like, if we go and tag ourselves somewhere, like we were doing the other day at this one restaurant, we tagged it, and we, everywhere we go, we put a Cherokee location. So if you see some kind of weird writing that looks like that, <laughs> we have been there. <laughs> so we've been placing places where we go. And this is Wade. Wade is uh, a very good friend of ours, very cultural. He, he's learned lots of the old songs, and he teaches them to the kids in the immersion school so that we won't lose a lot of this materials. And once again, I can't express how important this stuff is to get out there in the sense that when you have a really old culture, there is a responsibility to continue. And there is also a thing is like you guys make the most popular product in our entire community. And we hope that, hint, hint. <laughs> so as you can see, not everything is localized yet in Facebook, but uh, right. Facebook localization is a open community process. So anyone that's part of it, you know, can go there and start translating. So we're still in the process of doing this. And as you might notice, I just now realized this. This is, uh, we have the inline translating on us. So you see the underlines of the. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, th that's not normally there. But they made us admins at Facebook for this. Because I didn't have anyone to test and check and all that stuff. So um, normally you don't see that. So this is what's nice about having it on a mobile device. Like. We can Facebook and Cherokee on mobile, which gives us the ability to do locations and build maps. And when we were at the restaurant the other day, um, we placed the little thing and we wrote it in Cherokee. We made a name up for it that was similar to the idea of it. And some elders showed up to eat with us. <laughs> this is like, I mean, it's not something you normally think of. It's not something we thought, because they're on Facebook and they say hi to and like ride all the time. And, and there's some cultural things. If they post, we're getting where you know you have to respond, and like you have to, even if it's really complicated writing. And all of a sudden, they show up to eat with us. This is how communication works. Um, most of us today in modern, advanced languages takes a lot of it for granted. We can't take anything of it for granted. This is a white screen. Yeah. I don't know. There it is. Okay, there's Wikipedia. And it just skips through. <laughs> yeah, there's another white screen. There's our uh -huh. newspaper. After hundreds of years, we still exist as a newspaper, and it's still in English, and it's still in Cherokee. Um, there's an iPhone app for that. We'd like other apps someday for things that would be mobile <laughs> as well. Because communication, if you've known anything about things that are happening in Egypt, the skill set of what you give populations with technology changed the world. And this has changed ours. But it's not 100% saturation, because the most popular product, as of yet, hasn't developed yet for us. So we were very excited that Carla heard and them invite us up. And we we're hoping that we can somehow affect the idea of change and help our community more. Because um, we don't mind um, what product these guys use. We mind that it's in our language, because these kids have an option. Give up the language, pick something cool. Why do they have to make that choice? Let them play something cool. Let's let have some advanced technologies in our language. 
This kid's actually not, he can't see very good, so he increases everything <laughs> giant. <laughs> we gotta get this kid's eyes tested. Yeah, poor Sami. <laughs> he's, he's had some problems. <laughs> These are our kids when they first started learning to use a computer. It was a great day because all this stuff, they could only write notes. Can you imagine if you had no computers today and you wanted to send something to somebody? <laughs> I don't know about you, my handwriting's terrible these days. I write quick notes and stuff, but... And then you have to give it to this guy who's going to walk over to that building, go over there. It makes you a very weak society. And then you'll give up your language for anything better than that. And that's what happens to our people today but not now. But it's not 100%, there's some stick ball. We teach tradition, we teach all this stuff. We tell you the technology side of it because you know it's obviously what you do and we also hope to understand that not only are you doing that for, um, we have technologies for us and we do use some PCs and we rig them out with some third party software and since Vista, there's been a Cherokee font that's we could argue there's some characters upside down and stuff, but there has been one, and we're hoping to make progress, and we're going to talk to people here and get that settled. But this is, um, this is a, a very traditional game, and our stuff has more meaning than just an idea of, oh, it's a game. It's, it's very spiritual kind of stuff. And so this, traditional foods, this is a ceremony that we're teaching the kids. And, you know, like, everybody thinks of ceremonies as being very solemn, very respectable. They're having a blast. They're enjoying the culture. And they're enjoying the idea that this is, they're as advanced as any people on Earth. If you watch one people and your neighbors use English and do all these fancy stuff on the computer, and you know that you can't do it, how does that make you as a person feel? <laughs> So we fight every step, and we have for 100 years to stay up with technology. And so we came here to the biggest and baddest dog of the computer world <laughs> to tell you our story. Hey, that as of now, our kids see this as a Cherokee device. And they see these as Cherokee computers. And, but we, we want every mobile, digital device, computer, whatever, to be Cherokee for them. So if they want to use something else, they'll have that option. Uh, I said that's our ultimate goal, but right now this is what we have. We have one cell phone in the world that we can use, and we use it. But just like the regular populations, imagine if you know Germans only could use one brand. They would use it. Some would. The other ones might switch languages. Germans are pretty good at speaking English. Sometimes I can't tell if they're German. Um, but these kids they could grow up in a world where they never thought that it wasn't on everything. I mean, we have a chance. This picture was teach taken this spring. Asu Yet, the one that's picked, there's Unchi, Agaska, Unchi Snow, Agaska, Rain. These are wonderful children, and they're learning really great old songs as young people and how to lead. Right now they're doing a bear dance, and Tracy's probably very familiar with this kind of thing. Um, that's where they cut their claws up. <laughs> yeah, they walk around and this is a fun one. This is an animal dance. And this is, um, this is what we're trying to say. I mean, it sounds weird. Hey, why is, eh, how does it relate? You will lose entire cultural knowledge without this, without the tools to continue to communicate in your language. Yeah. I'm actually from Muskogee, which oh. is why I came, so I'm very excited to hear this. Um, but I'm curious to know, I've driven past the school and I knew it was there, I didn't know the details. What, um, I know you've worked with kids from a very young age, what's your um, penetration? How many kids have you reached and what's, what are the education choices for the kids in and around Tahlequah and the other area? Is it a, I'm sure it's, uh, it's free education, they can go there, what's the, What's the idea of, of spreading the education to more and more and more? Right, so the, the question, yeah, I'll just repeat it, yeah, yeah. The, the question is, is like the penetration of the amount of students we work with, the amount of people, um, the opportunities they have through education and stuff, how, what it is, and by the way, welcome from Muskogee. That's where we go a lot of times to watch the movie. <laughs> it's got more options there. Um, but we, um, the school has up to, um, I guess it's almost sixth grade. It's fifth grade right now, and we started at three, but now we actually start at six months. 
Um, we have five other schools that are partial immersion that we're trying to turn into full immersions in public schools. Um, then we were trying to also move into when these kids get older, they'll get into high school. So what we're going to do is feed all these five, actually six, if we get able to get them all within the next few years. But what it really is going to take is technologically um, connected people. And so we're fighting the idea of some internet and that a lot of these schools have already invested in PCs. And we have difficulties a lot of times getting things connected with that, with our language. So. Um, we're trying to make sure that we um, address these issues so that we can um, get that. There's also a um, school uh, um, uh, department so that you can actually get a Cherokee degree program. So we're also training the next teachers for all of these. So we teach Cherokee language, we teach education. So when you get your Cherokee degree, you are a certified teacher in Oklahoma who can speak the Cherokee language fluently and that we can push into a uh, immersion environment for the schools. Because our, our goal is to actually have a lot of schools, like dozens of schools, in the Cherokee language. And they're all connected through technology. And so, yes? So you mentioned that uh, one of these devices, uh, an Apple device, out of the box, it supported your website. Um, yeah. I assume that's because your website's uh, written in Unicode. Right. And that the device had uh, a Unicode font that supported Cherokee glyphs. Yeah. But uh, what else would need to be done on our devices that we need? I mean, Unicode's already in place, so we need font. You mentioned sort order. You'd want the OS to be localized um, and support uh, yeah. the keyboard. A keyboard. Yeah, the biggest yeah. thing is a keyboard. If we had a font and keyboard, we could run with that. Like, because we, we can read it, but we can't input it. In. And there's there are third party uh, keyboards we install and download and all this. but. Yeah, a lot of our user base is older, and for them to go out to a website, download something, install it, do this whole thing, that's just very difficult for them to do. And if there was just like a keyboard and a font, like well, you said the font's already on it, like but if we had a keyboard on it, that would like do wonders Especially for what we're like trying to the, do. Yeah, if we can get it like, because we want, we want the world for our children. You know, we want everything. I mean, I'll be very frank. We're not asking for a little. We want it all. But that being said. You know, there's baby steps in all processes. Keyboards, fonts, uh, keyboards, fonts for mobile devices um, are a big start because, you know, input and um, visual display is a giant leap forward because it really makes it useless for us if you can't do both. You know, it's neat to see a, a few characters on a device, but then if you get on a mobile device and it doesn't have it at all, it's not our device. And to be honest with you, I've seen the commercials and uh, Don one of our representatives that um, works with us at Cherokee Nation, he's a Microsoft employee that comes down. Um, they're really cool looking. And I'm quite sure there'll be a number of Cherokees that would want that. I mean, it's got a really neat discreet, I mean, because we want easy to use products. Um, our, our, for our kids, they'll figure out anything. But for our elders, we were shocked how they adapted to the iPhone, to be honest with you, because, um, and Facebook. Like, how, how did Ed Jumper know where we were? <laughs> and then he finds us and like, it's an, it's an intriguing thing that occurs. It's also intriguing that how much of adoption the elderly have put into this, which you wouldn't expect from our communities that um, some of them have just skipped computers entirely and went to mobile devices. Um, yeah, we are, have a lot of elders using iPads and wanting iPads just for the fact that to, in their eyes, uh, these aren't computers because there's no cable sticking out. There's no, like, no key. They just see it as like a really cool thing they can use in Cherokee. Because like when the minute you give them like a monitor and a keyboard and uh, the tower and all this, it like kind of freaks them out. But this really simple device, they're like, hey, I can do this and send something. They they really like that idea. And like I said, the font and keyboard is like, if we had that, we'd be like so happy. Yeah, we would actually do a dance for it. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, one thing I noticed that you didn't address, although I saw it on a couple web pages up there, is the Latin orthography. For the Cherokee language. Yeah, you know, Tracy was bringing this up to us, make sure we mentioned that. We okay. probably should have been very more clear on that. Now, I, I understand how much you like your, your script, and it is beautiful, and I think you should have it everywhere. But what is the place of the Latin orthography of the Cherokee language? You it's, mean, do you hate it? You mean if we wrote it phonetically or the fact that some of the characters are, are Latin based emblems? No, I don't mean because the characters are Latin based. I mean if you wrote it phonetically using the you know, English we, characters. You know, we yeah, can't well, get that adopted. You know, we've tried this idea, 
but phonetic typing for some communities, they, there's actually some Canadian communities that are fighting this idea that the phonetics out stripping the, the traditional writing. In our community, for some reason, like, and Tracy can talk to it, even the Eastern Band have this very, we, this is our language, so much so that um, this, the little phonetic part, is not. So culturally, we do not accept that as being our language, even if you know how to read English. And that's the, it's, it's a weird idea for most because you can say, well, you could, you could make it out, you can read English. And it is true, you can. But yeah, it's our, an interesting thing that happened is, uh, you know, like, so we have a, had a font that was based on this style for years, and this is, you know, obviously an old typeface, and it's not really great for a computer screen. So we started working on making some new fonts, and uh, we had to take off serifs and all this kind of thing, you know, for this idea. And we presented this to some of our speakers, and that, they flipped out. They're like, we cannot do this. You're changing our language. We're like, no, we're not. We're, gonna, we're optimizing the look of this for the modern era. But to them, like, if you were to take, like, this character looks like a C kind of, but it's a jaw. If you take that little serif off, that like freaked them out because this is all they've seen for hundreds of years. And so it's, it's an interesting problem. Uh, they're getting used to this idea of new fonts now, but it's, it is a struggle. And that's why like the phonetic typing, like we, we have very difficult, like we have to make sure that we're very careful in the design of even this style of different styles of fonts because even this is so far-fetched to our community. And it doesn't sound like, but this is our identity. We so it have, doesn't look like a B. So it this, looks yeah, like the Cherokee letter. Yeah, yeah, this is actually a yuh sound. Yeah. And um, the phonetics here kind of give the clues for people that don't know the language. We have this one up for you guys. But this is the U sound. It's not a U shape, but it's the Y-U sound. And um, all this stuff is so integrated into the cultural um, thing. It's, and it's a, good, it's a good and bad thing. You know, it would be good if we could just switch to English phonetics because a lot of tribes, like the Creeks and other tribes, most of them, have a phonetic-based typing uh, system that came from missionaries that were writing a Bible. We came up with our own system, and it's so ingrained that this is our writing system, you don't screw with it. It's, it's, a, it's a good thing, too, because we're very proud of our writing system so much we use it if it's on anything. It is ours. So we're trying to use that idea to make it where we can... Um, you know, when you stick this on something and someone sees it, it gives instant access to someone going, that's my product. That is ours. So it's good for anybody that's willing to do that, but it also shows you that, like, we have to be careful in every font design, and we also have to think that the speakers hate this. Like, I, I don't know of anybody that's over 40 that there was, um, there's a big debate because they teach a lot of phonetic um, stuff to the beginning students. They'll just write it in phonetics. And our community hates it because they're like, you've got to teach them right the first time. You have to teach them our language. That's who we are. You don't teach Chinese people. You don't, Chinese people still use their scripts. Cherokee should use their scripts. Japanese people should use their scripts. Like, we have the right to use our language. And, you know, for the longest time, they don't want computers because of it. In fact, we had very, we had almost no adoption from speakers in computers, unless forced to by employment, because they don't like that. And it's, a, it's, it's true that you could switch for it in the theory of it all, but in the grounds root level, it doesn't switch. And it's... I just want to tell you that I, I don't think you should switch either. You know, I mean, I can't imagine Japanese in, in phonetics, right? Why is it that you should change to the phonetic? It, it, it's beautiful the way it is. Well, I appreciate it. Um, the thing that's tough is that um, I think part of it deals with the identity thing. Um, we've had to give up so much for mm -hmm. so long. Um, this was come up by a Cherokee guy. It's our language. Yeah. Um, we're it's, very proud that we have, the, we know the guy be. who came up with it. We're very proud of him. Yeah. And when it comes to uh, your schools, do your kids, when do your kids start um, on the computer? Uh, second grade. And do you, the, does the immersion school have a computer for each child? Or yes, we're one to one. Yeah, because yeah. my son goes to a Spanish immersion school and they don't want him to be on the computer, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I see that 
that's probably one thing that they should probably encourage. And when I saw the video part, you know, how great would it be if those kids in, in that Spanish immersion school could actually do some kind of video with somebody in Mexico or Colombia or wherever they speak English because that would encourage them to want to do the Spanish because when he comes home, he wants to do English. Yeah. So that, that was very educational for me too to pass well, on. Well, culturally, and I don't know the Spanish culture very well, but in, um, when you're younger and um, a lot of times you don't ask as many questions because culturally you're the child. So we train our kids, and we don't even teach them this, but they become very obedient in the sense of behavior. So sometimes they don't force these questions on the, the teacher. But we need them to because we are trying to enforce the language, right, to, to learn to speak better and all this stuff. And we need them to start practicing more. When you put an elder, and sometimes what we have to do is we put an elder in the next room on iChat, the kids will all talk to them, blah, 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 blah. And they'll just keep going and rattling and responding because they see them on a, a computer screen, once again, it doesn't make any sense, because <laughs> the person's right here, we can just bring them in. They want to see them on a computer screen, because they ask more, they respond back and forth. It's nice because we can record it, but um, the kids will be in the same classroom, and it kind of annoys us, but they'll talk to each other <laughs> on iChat, in the same room. <laughs> and they have to turn the volume down, because there's that echo, echo, That's echo, nice. echo, echo, when they're talking. <laughs> and, they're kids. So you mentioned before that your um, the teachers can have a uh, teaching certificate to, mm -hmm. to be official Cherokee uh, teachers in, in various subjects. I'm sure. Do you um, do you have enough people who are getting that certificate to uh, work with the hopeful growth of the schools that you're doing? We have enough now, but we won't have enough if we don't grow in ten years. Our older teachers, most of our teachers are older, so we, um, one thing, and I don't know if we've um, described it well, is we always plan very heavily in our future because the good thing about Cherokee philosophy is that you don't plan a week out or a year out. It's a very longevity of time. And so we're planning on the idea that the ones we have now won't be here in 10 years, our age population. So we're building up for that time. Right now we have, um, almost a four to one ratio at our immersion school of Good teachers, staff. So, so staff. So like we have fluent speakers everywhere for our kids to interact in. So I'm guessing that you have um, lots of participation and understanding of the language of the older uh, folks and then the younger folks and you've got a, a band in the middle that's yeah. maybe not as, as mm -hmm. fluent or being able to encourage the, the language and everything. Are the schools, out of curiosity, um, open to non-Cherokee natives or, you know? Yeah, we have some that are non-Cherokee, some that are other tribes. Um, we do have that thing. It, you know, obviously we have Cherokee preference, and if, it's, if there's not enough room, the Cherokee gets the position. But we do have some. We have some other um, groups, some employees at Cherokee Nation. They have some kids there that they just live in the community. And um, a long time ago, um, Cherokee was the main language. If you're a white shop owner, you speak Cherokee to do business because you're going to go out of business without it. It's just that's how it was. When we started getting older, that stopped. It was a really weird uh, thing. As we grew up, when we were little, you hear it, and then you, you stop hearing it. And in the last three years, I see Cherokee every day. I hear Cherokee every single day in every part of my life. And I'm connected to all these elders in ways that annoying technologies do for you. <laughs> You know, you're never alone. <laughs> you're like, oh, and, and because they're older, you have to respond. You have to answer. You cannot, you know, unless you're in the bathroom or something. But. <laughs> so. Okay, actually, um, we're out of time, but I want to thank... Or don't. Wado. Or ski, Jay. <laughs> wanna, the um, Eastern band style of saying thank you. Yep, so I want to thank Roy and, Roy and Bonnie. No, Roy and Bonnie. <laughs> uh, uh, Roy and Joseph for coming, and... Um, hopefully given you some insights as to their culture and their their journey um, on on their language and technology and how it how it impacts them so um, and I'm I, I didn't introduce myself in the beginning but I'm Carla Hurd and I run the local language program through the public sector team and there's some Valentines you probably all got some in your in your mailboxes anyway but there's some Valentines with uh, um, 
the URL to my program on it where we work with um, non-mainstream languages and try to figure out what we can do at Microsoft to um, improve those and help them, which is obviously why, why we're speaking with Cherokee. All right, thank you, everybody. Thank you.